Hey y'all, uh, what's up? It's Ryan B. Sun Zeus here. I'm walking in this sketchy alleyway on the way back to my studio. It's about 3.30 a.m. here and whew, I just took a break and I'm ready to go back in. So let's check it out. wasn't the man who, the man who you thought that I was, well, shit went down, I did it plan, and now you reckon... Welcome to my studio. So, all you musicians, fellow musicians, songwriters, or budding creatives in the process want to know, like, you know, what's, what's going to be a good space for me to create in? And... I was thinking about it. I was like, you know, here's my little space. It's uh, seven and a half feet wide by 10 feet long. You know, it's not very big. It's here in Los Angeles. Rent's expensive, uh, you know? So we make the best of what we can. And uh, I came up with uh, five things that I thought it's important to consider, you know, when you're making your creative space, whether that be for music, writing, filmmaking, content creation, quilting, knitting, arts and crafts, painting, whatever, whatever it may be, cooking, you know, I don't know. And like first and foremost, the first one I thought of was the vibe. You know, it's got to feel like a creative space. Is it inspiring? Is it comfortable? Do you feel like it's a safe place to, frankly, make a lot of mistakes in? Uh, you know, and sometimes the best things come from our mistakes. And, you know, we need to feel that like freedom to make those mistakes and come out the other side, you know, as if it's a long, dark tunnel and you know, you sometimes you don't see any light at the end, but um, there's, you know, you keep going and then boom, you know, you see, see light. So for example, what I did in my place so far, you know, my buddy, my best friend got me a Colorado Starbucks mug, you know, and it's just nice vibes there. Whenever I look at it, I think of him, I think of Colorado, I think of our connection from uh, when I moved out to Los Angeles and I met him on Craigslist and we, I, I went over to this place to look, you know, and then there was a John Mayer CD and instantly like we bonded over like that John Mayer Born and Raised CD and eight years later, he's still one of my best friends. Uh, stuff like that, you know, I have a bamboo plant. It's nice to get some greenery. It's nice to, you know, I don't, it doesn't get any natural light, but somehow it's still alive. So, you know, like that, I have a little witch's cauldron. Any creative space needs one of those. Um, I don't practice witchcraft, but I, I am a fan of Harry Potter. And let's see, you know, I have some pictures of my loved ones up here. Uh, so yeah, you know, whenever I come in here, it's like, this is my safe zone to just, create to my heart's content. So the second thing is a place where you can keep your tools. And, you know, for me, that's like my keyboard, my computer, interface, microphones. Uh, I made these sound panels from like rock soul, rock wool, and some Anawalt lumber and then went to the fashion district, slapped some burlap on it, mounted them up, you know, so a space that can have that. You know, I have uh, a little mini fridge, a little coffee maker. You got, you have to have snacks because sometimes in the studio you find that hunger strikes and it's such a 
productivity killer sometimes to have to like go in traffic and there's cars beeping their horns and just go off on this whole tangent that might take a couple hours and you just lose time. So yeah, you know, you keep some snacks, you keep some water, some refreshments to just kind of like, you know, we're humans, we consume and then we excrete it and it gives us the, I don't know, the life force to, to keep going. The other one is like, a place for me personally it helps me to uh make these records because i'm always in a battle with posture like what's good posture what's bad posture you know inevitably i'm gonna like punch over a little bit or just like ooh, you know after hours looking at a screen it becomes painful sometimes so for me it's important to be able to take a break and do some stretches you know maybe do some yogic breathing kind of just really check in with my posture and realign it so that way that way I can work longer in the studio and I'm talking about in a day's time and in a lifetime's time. Sometimes when you have physical activity, it can really put you in a different space and get you back in line with that creative spirit. And that me is where the best creativity comes in to existence sometimes i mean it's already there right it's just we're looking for it and sometimes you know the bad posture will clog up the energy in our body and we have to kind of just release it to let it flow through again and into this third dimensional existence so to speak Fourthly, uh, especially, this one's especially for musicians, but I suppose it could be for painters, anyone either, like else. It's gotta be quiet sometimes. Here, it's super noisy, about 40% of the time, because there are drummers all around. And I, I, I hang out with a friend, he's like a modern day Socrates type character, and he says some really, really wise sh stuff sometimes. Uh, and one of the things he told me was, drums is just noise without context. And that one just, that nugget just hit me over the head like a pile of bricks. And I was, I have to admit, I was kind of dazed for a while, but I eventually, I ate some soup, some good chicken broth, bone broth, and uh, revitalized me a, li a little bit. And I was able to ingest that information. And now it's a part of me. And then, you know, I bring it into my own life. Like, what am I making that is just noise out of context? And is there a context for it to be put into? And if so, can I craft that context? Um, and if not, perhaps, you know, put it off to the side for a little bit, move on to the next thing. And, you know, if the other thing's meant to be, you know, maybe it'll get picked back up again. And if not, that's fine because it's just, there's so many unlimited possibilities and ideas in this universe that I don't really know where I was going with that, but uh, let's cut to the next thing. Here, I really have to take advantage of the times when it's quiet, like now, four in the morning, or 9 a.m., 10 a.m. is sometimes good. So you kind of have to learn what are the best times in your space, and then you can plan accordingly. If it is loud here, 
maybe I don't do recording, maybe I do some writing or you know something that's not audio sensitive or I take a walk which brings me to my next point that's an aspect of the fifth important thing to look for in a creative space and it's location is it close to home is it far away from home is it in your home is it in your bedroom ideally you know it's nice to have a space outside of the bedroom, outside of the living room. That's just kind of its own dedicated space because when you walk in, you condition your mind to do whatever activity you usually do in that space. So for example, that's why they say, and I don't know who they are, I guess doctors, but they say you should avoid watching TV or doing work in your bed because then when it comes time to sleep, your body's used to doing other stuff in the in bed. So, you know, uh, it's not gonna come as easily. When I'm in the music studio, when I'm in the music studio, it's like a dedicated space where I walk in, I see my gear, I set the vibe, turn my little, Christmas lights on. It's kind of like uh, priming myself to go in and do my work. And that's probably another concept for another video. There are different routines that you can do. And when you make them into habits, it kind of gets you ready to do the thing that you usually do. So if, for example, you know, if a runner usually stretches before he runs, it's not only preparing his physical body, but it's preparing his mental um, body. D does the mind have a body? <laughs> I don't know, let me know in the comments down below. And remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content, more live performances, more music videos and releases and all that jazz, even though I play pop.